Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we're going to be building a stacked bar chart, but this time it's going to be a 100% stacked bar chart in Microsoft Excel. So let's understand um, the context here. Let's say, for example, we have the data on customer or let's say employee satisfaction data. So every year, you're going to get satisfaction surveys from your employees, and then they either rate you for one of these five options, right? So very dissatisfied, dissatisfied, neutral, satisfied, and very satisfied. And in 2018, when you surveyed 57 employees in your company, you got this result. And then in 2023, you got this result. And this just means that 13 employees in 2018 rated as dissatisfied out of the 57 employees total. In 2023, 13 employees rated as dissatisfied out of a total of 107 employees who responded to the survey. So these two 13s are not the same in terms of proportion or percentage of respondents. And so that's what the, uh, the stacked bar chart will not clearly easily communicate. The 100% stacked bar chart will. So in this case, if I look at this chart that's already built, in 2023, the dissatisfied, which is the light orange uh, color bar, it's, it's taking up much smaller percentage of the horizontal bar for 2023, whereas the same 13 here, if you look at it in 2018, it's taking up much more, much more area, much more proportion of the horizontal bar. And that, that's because 13 employees being dissatisfied out of 57 employees is much bigger dissatisfaction percentage compared to 13 employees out of 107. So this is the message that we're trying to communicate with the 100% stack bar chart. Build this chart from scratch in Microsoft Excel using the same data. And we'll use this chart as a reference for us here. And we'll be building one from scratch here. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select my data, all the data. And remember that this column is actually text column and it's not a numeric column uh, because Excel will try to do something different if it is numeric. So in your case, if you just have an inch of year, your data could be something different. You could be doing it by department. You could be doing it by, you know, location. You could be doing this by, you know, salesperson or some, some uh, category dimension. So make sure that you have the data, all columns selected, including the header. Go to insert. And then go to 2D bar, choose 100% stacked bar. And so the data will look like this. Same, something similar to what we want to build. The colors are different. That's okay. Um, you can change the colors um, to a different theme, or you can change um, each CD separately, which I will talk about just now. But before I change any of the colors, I want to just quickly enter the chart title. Turn that chart title on and off from here. And once you turn it on, you can type in uh, exactly what you want and then customize the, so uh, I could have just done undo, but I want to show. You can format it differently and then you can change the size and it whatever you want. There we go. Now, that's being done, you can also add, by clicking the plus, add the access titles. So in this case, you can do this as the year, and um, you know you don't need uh, any access titles here because this is basically counting the percentage of respondents. So you can type that in, or in my case, I just want more space for my visual, and it's not gonna add any more value. So if I don't need a chart title, uh, access title, I can click on that box, hit delete key, and that goes away. And then I can then move on to the legend. So right click on the legend, format legend, move it to the top because I don't want it at the bottom, I want it at the top. And just my personal preference, uh, like them uh, here on the top. So we have moved the legend. And then there is a little vertical grid lines there. You can select them from here, but if you find it hard to select from there, you can always go here and then choose the major grid lines and then go to solid line, make it less visible so it's not distracting. There we go. That's good. So now 
The next thing I want to do here is if you want to format these colors differently, you can click on each color and then go to, you know, fill, choose a specific color that you want. So you can fully control it. That way, you can also go here and say, okay, I want to go to the dissatisfied series and then change a different color. I could go to the neutral and then maybe make it gray. Uh, and I can go to satisfied and maybe make it purple, very satisfied, a little bit darker purple. Uh, if you want the, the message, I think the one thing I didn't do right was if I go with the green, I can go with the darker green. There we go. So at least there is some uh, meaning to these colors that can be associated. Again, not getting into the, uh, that, that's not necessarily the focus of this video, but you can control the colors by just going into these options and changing it. Or you can click on this and then choose one of these options if you'd like, depending on the data you have. Now, that's about formatting the horizontal bars. You can add labels. So I'm going to click on that and then I can click on plus and then add data labels. So this will add the labels. And depending on the color that we chose for each of the CDs, sometimes the font color has to be modified manually to white because it had a dark green background and I want to make sure that the labels are visible. I can't really see the purple color font uh, on there as well. So I'm going to click on it and make it white so it's more clearly visible. Now, we have built a chart which is pretty close. I'm going to do the border. Click on the chart, go to the border, make the border a little bit darker, rounded corners, one point. Here we go. See, relatively close. A couple of other settings that I want to let you know is if you right click on the axis here and say format axis, click on the chart, actually go back here to one of the series. Let's say we go to very dissatisfied. You can then go into the series options and you can control the gap between each of these horizontal bars. So I'm going to click choose, let's say, 100%. And this basically brings these together. Uh, and again, depending on what you have in your uh, category axis, I have numbers, four digits. So it's much shorter. But if you have longer text, then I may want to have a little bit more of a gap between one horizontal bar and the next one. So in that case, again, all I have to do is go back here and then I can change this uh, to, let's say, 200%. Then the bars themselves get narrower and the gap becomes higher. So depending on what data you have, you can control the width between the two horizontal bars uh, by adjusting the gap width. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we have built the chart which is a 100% stacked bar chart, which automatically will represent the numbers in as a percentage of the total. Even though we did not provide that input to Excel, Excel will automatically calculate the total behind the scenes, then calculate the percentage. Um, it's unfortunate that I don't think there is a way to add that percentage easily onto the chart. Uh, I wish there was a way to do it. I hope uh, sometime soon we will get an option because instead of just saying 13, can it say what percentage of respondents? Uh, that'll be great. Uh, we can do so uh, by calculating it ourselves. And it, then what's the point of 100% stack bar chart if I'm automatic, if I have to calculate the percentages and then create a chart. Um, so anyway, that's a story for another day. But this is how you will build the 100% stacked bar chart in Microsoft Excel. If you have any questions or suggestions, please post them in the comment section. In the next video, we'll be adding the total to the right side here of this chart, because that will also make it very clear what's the total. Uh, along with the breakdowns, we also want to display the total. This is another thing that Microsoft Excel doesn't automatically allow us to do with a checkbox. Uh, we'll have to create it and add it. Uh, via a process. It's not a very long process. It's a couple of minutes, but we'll do that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.